Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Al Haddad. Uh, I'm a software developer. And today I'm going to talk about SSH and SSH, SSH tunneling. Um, okay. So, what is SSH? Basically, SSH stands for Secure Shell. It's a network protocol that allows you to connect to a remote computer securely. So, think of a server or any computer that's uh, connected Muhammad? to the internet. I'm sorry. Uh, your, your voice is a bit low. Can you raise your voice? Will I increase uh, the voice from now? Uh, okay. So it's a network protocol that allows users to connect to a remote computer that has a SSH daemon or SSH server. Uh, most common implementation is OpenSSH. It's what you would find in most uh, Linux distributions uh, because it's open source. So benefits of SSH, uh, you can access any remote SSH enabled system. So you can execute commands on that system. You'll also be able to copy files between systems. Uh, suppose that you have a local file, a remote file that contains uh, sensitive data and you want to copy them. Uh, ability to forward network traffic from and to the remote machine, which is what we refer to as uh, tunneling. So how does it work? Basically, SSH uh, uh, is built on the client server model. And the remote machine that you'll try to connect to must have an SSH name or which uh, and has the service name SS, SSHD. By default, that daemon listens on port 22. You can change that port to whatever you like. Uh, the local machine will then have a SSH client that will try to connect to the remote machine. So basic server setup, assuming that we're in Ubuntu 20.04 or any Debian distribution, we can install the OpenSSH server using sudo app install openssh-server. And we can check for the uh, service status. And we can see here that it's running. I had this one for running for quite a while now. As we can see here, it's active for like one month or something. Uh, now, after starting the server, uh, of course, there are other stuff that must be done. Uh, if the remote machine is behind the firewall, you have to add a firewall rule, you need to do some port forwarding, but I'm here I'm assuming that we have a very basic network setup. So assuming that we've done the basic server setup, now we want to connect to that machine that has that server, SSH server. So first we check that we have SSH client. Most distributions come with an SSH client installed, the open SSH variant. Assuming that we have it, we can just run the command SSH with the username at the host name. So for example, here I have SSH, my name, Emal Haddad, at barcam21.dns.net. Basically, this is my host name. It, it also could be an IP address of the remote machine. It doesn't matter really, as long as, the, as it can be resolved. Uh, by default, this, com this command will try to connect to the SSH server on this machine at port 22. So using my uh, username here, Mal Hadar, this could be root, this could be any other username that's available on that machine. Also, we can change the target port for whatever reason, if you're concerned, using the dash P uh, argument. So here I'm connecting to this machine using dash P 1234, the port 234 for the SSH server. And here I have a screenshot. When I tried to connect to that machine, it asked me for my password, for the user's password, obviously. And when I when I entered my password, the password doesn't appear here. It said, welcome to Ubuntu. Now I'm able to execute any command that I would like to execute on that machine. For example, right. present working directory showed slash home my user directory. LS showed me a test file that I've Hamid, can you hear me? Yes. Um, your voice keeps going back and forth. Are you using some sort of uh, noise cancellation app? Uh, or, no. Or uh, auto audio tuning? No, actually, I'm not. Maybe it's my mic that's been acting weird. I'm not sure. Maybe. Okay. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. No worries. Because no I'm on. literally sticking the, <laughs> sticking the as, sticking it as close as possible. No worries. Go ahead. Okay. 
uh, it's okay, you can tell me if it goes again so I can see what I can do about it. So connecting to the remote machine, now we've connected to it, I can, I have shell access to that machine and I can execute any command on that machine as long as I have the permissions to do so. So here I'm presenting the working directory and listing the files and directories and I can execute whatever command I want on that machine, just like I was there on sitting in front of that machine, right? Uh, another feature of SSH that, that I find useful uh, is SCP, secure copy command, that uses SSH protocol for the data transfer. So you can read more about that in the manual page, man SCP. And the way you'd use it is that you'd say, okay, so shell copy at that port. So here I have it at port 1234, which is the SSH port that I've, I have open. It, by default, it's 22, but here I've decided to make it 1234. Username is my username, Morhadar. Host name is the host name that we used for the previous SSH session. Colon, the path to the file or directory. Uh, so here, I selected slash home slash molhadar slash test is the file that we've seen in the previous slide over here. And I've copied this file into the current working directory, which is barcam21, so dot slash, right? And when I do so, it will ask me to enter my password, just like the first initial SSH connection. Once I do so, it will tell me what file, what file is being copied and the progress of that. And then I can show that file uh, or read it or do anything, and I have it locally on that machine, on the local machine. So I can copy directories, I can copy an entire code base, I can copy anything from any machine to another using SSH copy or, or SCP shell copy. One last thing about SSH is that we have SSH tunneling. In basic term, SSH, SSH tunneling is relaying network traffic or forwarding it to from the remote machine over an SSH connection. One use case is to, for example, to access a remote web application that's not publicly published. Say that I have it running on localhost. So I'm using the, on the remote machine, I have that application and I'm developing it, but it's not published yet. It's only accessible on the remote localhost. Another use case is to forward local traffic to a machine that's only accessible through an internal network, which we'll see an example of that later on, uh, which is the local port forwarding. So for the tunneling, we have three types here, the local port forwarding, remote port forwarding, and dynamic port forwarding. Uh, my example that I have is dynamic port, port forwarding, but you're free to explore the other two. So for local port forwarding, assume that you have your own machine one, and you want to connect to machine three, the database machine three. But that database machine three is not accessible directly through your network, but it's accessible, accessible through the machine two, which, has, which happens to have uh, SSH daemon or SSH set, right? So I can connect, to machine, connect from machine one to machine two over SSH and forward all my traffic in a specific port to database or mach machine number three, right? So the database is not accessible directly for machine number one. So we forward the traffic for the specific port to go through machine two to machine three. And we have remote port forwarding, which is the opposite of this scenario. And we have dynamic port forwarding, which is, uh, which creates a SOX proxy, a proxy, a proxy that will forward any request from any port locally to any port remotely. So example use case for this kind of port forwarding is to forward all, all browser traffic through the SOX proxy. An example of dynamic port forwarding here, for example, I'm saying SSH, again, the same command, my username, the host name, and followed by the port and the dynamic port that I want to create the SOX proxy in, or bind the SOX proxy in. So here I'm saying dash D capital stands for dynamic, port 3333, three, three. and my SSH is going to connect on port 1234. Here, I'm trying to enter my password. After establishing the session, I went to my browser configuration and asked, I asked it to go uh, to forward all the internet access, all the traffic, I'm sorry, 
through the SOX proxy that's local on port 3333. Okay. And when I do so, I can connect, for example, to, through, to this IP address on this port. So this port is, does, not, does not live on the local machine. It lives on the remote machine. This web application that's published on port 9876 is not accessible on localhost. It's accessible on the remote machine. And when I did the, the previous configuration, that configuration that we see here, I was able to connect to this, uh, the, the remote machine IP address, the local IP address basically here, with the IP address of the local web app on the remote machine. And I was able to connect to it locally from the machine that I've SSH from. And this is basically dynamic port forwarding. So any traffic that goes through my browser now, literally any traffic will go through that SOX proxy, which will basically take all my internet traffic and forward it there. And I can access uh, even the systems that are within the, net uh, within the network of this machine right here. So for me, how do I mainly use it? I mainly use it for working from home. Uh, so basically I have my work machine, which is the remote machine. So I don't have to duplicate my setup in multiple, in multiple environments, the data and the repos and everything, right? And I access my code by VS Code Remote, which is uh, built for uh, this specific use case using SSH. So the code is accessible by VS Code Remote and I access the remote network by SSH tunneling. I write the code on the editor and I see my edits on the browser directly without having to uh, duplicate my whole environment. Uh, that's it for SSH tunneling. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have any question, I'm ready to answer.